Hello, today we're going to be talking about the four stages of confident online leadership. So let's get started with four stages of confident online leadership. I'm Shelley Carney. I'm a life transitions leadership coach. I'm also an author in Magical Treasure Princess, as seen on A Gypsy's Kiss on YouTube. Uh, the two companies that I work with are The Softer Side for Life Coaching and A Gypsy's Kiss for our Treasure Hunt uh, book and experience. We have uh, platforms that lead into these businesses that are an intermediary uh, place where those who are online can meet with us online. On YouTube, uh, for instance, my YouTube channel on the soft, for the softer side, I have 453 subscribers right now. And for a Gypsy's Kiss, we have 6,800 subscribers currently. And that varies back and forth from day to day. On Facebook, I have 1,181 um, followers on Facebook for the softer side and 1,698 for Gypsy's Kiss. On Instagram, I have 1,860 following me on my personal brand and 362 on a Gypsy's Kiss. And we have an email list on a Gypsy's Kiss at around 280 right now. And that's growing every day. So ask yourself, why do I need a platform? Who is this for? Uh, well, I'm reaching out to people who are coaches, authors, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, consultants, speakers, those who just want some sort of place where they can be online to meet with people who become their audience and their followers and eventually their clients or customers. I want to grow an online community that will provide a stream of clients as well as active and passive income for years to come. Who needs an online platform? As I mentioned, we uh, reach out to coaches, entrepreneurs, leaders of all kinds, authors, speakers, and trainers. Uh, basically, everybody wants to have some kind of an online presence because when you're looking for a way to uh, sell products or sell yourself and your services, you're going to need that online platform as a place to meet with your customers. Stage one. Stage one is Basically, we want to do that whole no like, trust, transform, and stage one is no. So uh, to know me is to uh, show an authentic enthusiasm that people can find and connect with. I want to become visible and stand out from the crowd. As you can see, this panda bear is standing out from the crowd, being very unique and very different. Everybody's just a normal, everyday person, but right in the middle of this group is a giant panda bear. Well, that attracts our attention and it stands out. So how can we do that online? Well, we can smile, invite, and attract people who resonate with our message. We can share our life according to the audience's needs. So if your target audience needs, say, for instance, you are a motivational speaker and you want to reach out to clients who might be having events, whether that's online or in person, uh, and you want to offer your services, you're going to reach out to those people that you are most likely to work with or who would be most likely to request you to be a speaker at an event. So, uh, so these are the people you want to be sharing your life with according to what they need from you. Uh, if your target audience is say thought leaders or coaches you want to share your life and your story so that it resonates with those people you want to be the hero of your own story and develop an awareness of your brand and let's get into those a little bit deeper first of all remember that you are worthy 
basically a lot of people have difficulty showing up online because they're nervous. They're like, why would anybody look at me? Why would anybody want to notice me? I don't have anything to offer that's special or unique or worthy. Just remember the ultimate truth of who you are is not, I am this or I am that, but I am. That's from Eckhart Tolle. And basically it's telling us it doesn't matter who you think you aren't. What matters is that you are. And have you ever heard this before? You will never get a second chance to make a first impression. And does that hold you back when you want to do something? Do you hold yourself back because it's not perfect yet? I want you to ignore this, especially if you're growing a platform online. Everybody makes mistakes. It's human and it creates that connection with people because they see that you're human and that you're trying anyway. Present yourself as I'm just like you. Maya Angelou said, I'm just like you. I want to be a good human being. I'm doing my best and I'm working at it. So although Maya Angelou was well regarded and somewhat, you know, held above the crowd uh, because of her talent, she said, I'm just like you, and we can do that as well with our audience. Be the hero of your story. Being a hero means showing up and giving 100% of myself to whatever is happening at the moment. You see this dad with his child. He's being in the moment. He's enjoying the child, playing with the child, and being there for that child. He's holding up that child, right? Uh, That's a hero. Our story, the hero of your story, so the story part is whatever we believe about ourselves to be true. And we can change our story at any time because we have that power. So what's in your brand? Who do you serve? What is your promise? What makes you unique? And what experience do you provide? Those are all the things that go into your brand and you want to Sprinkle those into all of your posts and your online presence, your videos, whatever it is that you're putting out online, you want to have these things in mind and stay true to those. Answer your free, answer these questions for yourself. How can you share your life in a way that one attracts and entertains? Two, defines your target audience. You want people to self-select. Yes, this is for me or no, that's not for me. So they should be very clear on who you're reaching out to so that they can self-select if you are for them. Uh, Can you share your life in a way that identifies you as a leader and feels authentic and consistent? Stage two is like. Understand and respond to your audience. You need to be focused on your audience. Who are they? What do they need? What do they want from you? Uh, Why are they there? So give generously and create value. Determine the themes of connection. Align your message to those themes. Then acknowledge trends and competition from within your own parameters. Let's get into that a little bit. So giving value is providing content to your audience that is relevant, useful, motivational, and inspirational, keeps them coming back for more. So who do you think would be following this young woman? Baking cakes, making cookies, beautiful, um, beautiful cakes, right? So somebody who wants to learn how to do that would be following her and that would be relevant for an audience that wants to learn how to bake these kinds of cakes, these beautiful cakes and cookies. Uh, She can give useful ideas and tips such as how to combine ingredients in a way that makes for the most flavorful product and the most beautiful product, Uh, something that could be motivational. Why would I want to do that? Inspirational, what she went through telling her story. All of these things could be very valuable for her audience. 
connect through themes. So you want to define and constrain your themes. I'll just give you a for instance with a gypsy's kiss. Our themes include treasure, travel, uh, searching for treasure, adventure, community, belonging, um, fun, and hope. And we back that up with a book and a treasure hunt and uh, weekly shows so people can come together in community. So think about what your themes are. What is your audience coming to you for? What do they want to receive from you as results? So these are based on results specific to your audience. And remember, there are riches in the niches. What does that mean? You want to niche down as much as you can. Uh, you want to know exactly who your audience is. So if somebody says to you, who do you serve? Your answer is not, oh, I serve anybody, everybody. No, you need to niche down very small, especially when you get started. When you get started, you want to resonate with a smaller group of people because those are going to be your core fans. Then be true to yourself. Acknowledge trends and events that are going on around you. Say, okay, there's a pandemic going on and here's how it's affecting my industry. Here's what it's I'm seeing in my audience. Here's what's happening in our uh, niche. And let me be an observer and relate all this information to you within my parameters of my brand, meaning I'm not going to talk about the pandemic or politics or anything else unless it specifically relates to my audience and affects them in a way that is wrapped up within my niche and my industry. And um, in that way, I can acknowledge what's going on in the world, but I keep it very specific to the needs of my audience. So answer, your for, answer these questions for yourself. How can you understand and respond to your audience in a way that provides value specific to their needs, promotes connection, and demonstrates knowledge and awareness? Stage number three is trust. You want to be fully responsible and confident when you're online with your audience. So develop a game plan, but be flexible. No blame, no excuses. Stay true to your brand and always show up with integrity. Let's get into that a little deeper. First, be prepared. You want to plan out your presentation. If you're doing a video, you want it to be planned. Even if it's live, you should have some sort of an agenda that you follow so you know what's coming up next and you can be prepared and your audience can be prepared and they know what's coming up next. And then they feel more like they're a part of things if they have an understanding of what's coming up next create an offer. So whenever you're putting out a video or a post of any kind, a blog post, whatever it is you're putting out there, attach an offer. So for instance, with this presentation today, I do have an offer that if you go to esofterside.com, you can download the slides. There is a worksheet with all of the questions that you can fill out for yourself and you get to watch this video. So that is the offer that is created as a part of this presentation. Now, it doesn't have to be a new offer for everything you do, but everything you do should have something that connects to your business. Um, even if it's just an awareness of your business, you should always have, be thinking, okay, how does this relate? How does this circle back to uh, how I can help my audience? Next, you want to adapt to your audience's needs. So if uh, what I'm offering today is going to be shown only to an audience that needs to hear it, it, it's not going to go out to everybody in the world. It's going to be targeted at the people who are interested in this topic. Then you want to brand your environment. And that may mean if you are showing up um, in your home, you want to have your background 
branded. So maybe if you have written a book, you have your book in the background. If you are a coach, you want your um, office or background to look like what it is that you coach about. So if you coach business, you want your um, office to look very business-like. If you coach fitness, you want to look like you're, you know, in a fitness gym or a fitness setting, even if it's in your home. So brand your environment according to what it is that you're offering your audience. No blame or excuses. Build trust through taking responsibility. So this happens all the time. Acknowledge mistakes. Don't blame other people for them. Just say, this happened and I appreciate your patience with it. Uh, I'm still learning. Did you see how that made you feel like, oh, well, I can be magnanimous and uh, allow my patients, you know, to to make you feel better as the presenter, right? So if I said, oh, I'm so sorry, everything's going wrong today, and oh, traffic was a mess, and oh, the the computer's just messed up, and, and you don't care, right? You're like, oh, um, get your, get, just get your act together, lady, right? Whereas if I say, okay, These things are happening, but it's okay, and we're going to get through this together, and I thank you for your patience and understanding. Uh, It's always better to thank your audience for their patience and understanding rather than apologize for taking up their time and and that sort of thing. It puts them in a much better frame of mind. Uh, They can be your friend. They can be magnanimous when you thank them instead of apologizing. And identify yourself as a learner. I'm still learning this uh, new system, and I thank you for, you know, sticking it out with me, and I'll let you know how it's going. Oh, people appreciate that. It's just like if you have a kid at home who's really trying hard to learn something new, you appreciate how much effort they put into learning it. Or doesn't even need to be a kid. If it's anybody in your life who says, I'm learning this thing, you're like, good for you for learning something new and stepping out of your comfort zone. So always identify yourself as a learner when things are going wrong. Brand identity. Want to identify why people follow you. Let's look at these two photographs. The top one, they're fun, they're a little goofy, a little silly, they, uh, they're, right, they're just having a good time, right? It's all about being fun and spontaneous and maybe a little goofy and silly. Good times, right? Look at the gentleman in the bottom right corner. Very serious, right? He wants to talk to you about serious topics. So he knows the people who follow him want to hear serious topics, Should they switch places? Should the goofy, silly, funny, entertaining comedy people start talking about serious topics and using their platform to say, you know, here's what's going on in politics in the news when what they normally do is just show up and entertain you and have a good time? No, here's why. You will turn off your audience if you do not follow your brand. Stay in your lane. So if you're a comedian, you're stay a comedian. Don't go into politics and start spouting off about, oh, you know, those people in, in uh, politics and they, they should be doing this or that. People do not follow you for that. They do not want to hear that from you. So use your platform for the highest good of everyone involved, but stay in your lane. Integrity. Important to meet or exceed your promises. So if you tell people, I'm going to be here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m., be there every night at 7 o'clock p.m. If for some reason your uh, internet breaks or whatever, do your best to be there in some way or another to let them know, here's what's going on. Because when you stop meeting your promises, people, people turn you off. They're like, they don't, they don't show up. I don't need to show up. Show up on time. If you say you're going to be there at 7 p.m., everything starts at 7 p.m. or a few seconds before that. So be there on time so that people know you're going to start on time every time and they can trust you to do that. 
be honest. If stuff comes up, be honest about it. If, uh, if you're not feeling well, be honest about it. You can show up and you can say, I'm not feeling well tonight, so tonight's going to be a short show. That's great. That's fine. You tried. You showed up. You were meeting uh, your promises. Support others and take the high road. So what this means is if, uh, say, somebody is making you unhappy or angry or uh, you're getting some bad comments or something's happening that's upsetting you, you don't want to be negative on the air. You want to take the high road. You want to say, that's okay, and we're going to move forward, and it doesn't, you know, it does. it's not going to change what I'm doing. So you want to stick to your integrity and take the high road. Uh, if somebody's trying to tear you down, that's not something that you want to get down in the dirt with them. You want to, you want to always take the high road. Don't play down. Answer these questions for yourself. How can you be fully responsible and confident in a way that establishes structure, offers leadership, stays on brand, and models integrity? Now, all of these questions are in that downloadable worksheet. Stage four, transform. Transform your viewers into fans. Greet people, offer encouragement, promote ownership, allow viewers to support you, and protect your audience. Let's get into those. What is in the power of a name? When you use somebody's name, say when I'm doing a live video and somebody shows up in the chat room and says something, if I say to them, hello, Jasper, it's great to see you again. Thanks for being here. What does that do for Jasper? Wow, he feels recognized. Somebody paid attention to him. He gives me his loyalty in return for my loyalty to him. He feels rewarded for having shown up and having said something in the chat room, having engaged. He's, he's been rewarded. And he's felt encouraged to do it again. He got positive reinforcement of whatever he did, whatever he said, he was positively reinforced for that behavior, so he's going to do it again and again. Ownership. Give viewers the opportunity to give their opinions, to offer their help, to buy into your offers, and to share your offers with others. This gives them a feeling of ownership of they are taking part they are uh, participating and they feel somewhat responsible for the success of your channel, your videos, your posts, your blogs, whatever it is that they are taking ownership in. They feel some of that success. They feel responsible for it. They, they enjoy the feeling of uh, helping you. So give them that opportunity to do that. Do polls, uh, ask their opinions, tell them, you know, I'm thinking about doing this or that. Which would you prefer? What would you like? Uh, if they want to offer their help and say, for instance, you have a YouTube channel and you need a moderator and you have somebody who shows up every single time on your channel whenever you go live, ask them if they'll be a moderator for a month or two and give them that little bit of responsibility or a way to help you and they will take on ownership. Offer them things, small things that they can buy. For instance, a book or a PDF or a download or something that you have produced that they can buy um, maybe at a low price or uh, if they're really loyal fans, you can have them in at a higher price and ask them to share your offers with other people. Uh, they could share your videos, they could share your posts and get the word out about you or a promotion that you're doing or the products that you're selling and uh, give them that opportunity to take ownership and to uh, be a part of your success. Monetize and deputize. This is just taking that one step further. So you 
might be thinking I could do, uh, so if you have a podcast or a YouTube channel, maybe Patreon would be a good option for you to uh, have that sort of a membership model where people can give you a certain amount of money every month and they get an extra perk. Uh, we can offer ads on uh, sometimes on blogs or YouTube sh uh, channels or podcasts. Can You can do advertising to make a little bit of extra money. Uh, for affiliates, uh, if you're selling a product and somebody wants to be an affiliate and sell that product for you, you can offer those affiliate fees. Or if you offer a service and they bring you a referral, you can give them a referral fee or a prize. Product sales, uh, of course, when uh, you build a platform and you have a new product come out, the product goes first to your uh viewers and they're very excited about it because they've been with you all the way as you developed that product. Maybe they gave you their input and their opinions as you built that product. So they're excited to partake in buying that product. And then of course there's memberships. Um, wonderful way to have a group coaching program or uh, any sort of mastermind course or something of that nature. Protect and defend. Your audience is your greatest asset. It takes time and effort to build this audience. So protect them and defend them. Appreciate them. Uh, give them, you know, if you can give them any freebies or sneak peeks or uh, anything that's available to to hand them to say, here, I appreciate you. I thank you. You guys are awesome. Even if it's just words of praise, people, people need that and they will keep returning to get that. Uh, offer them your respect. You know, uh, I think what you said is really brilliant. It doesn't fit in with me and what I need, but it's still brilliant. You know, that respect that even though I disagree or I don't need what you're offering, I still respect that you have that. Uh, protect them. Uh, so if you decide you're going to do interviews and bring people onto your channel or into your blog or however you're bringing extra people in, maybe into the course or the membership to speak, you want to make sure it's somebody who is going to resonate with your audience. Protect your audience. Uh, so bring in only those people who are going to give them valuable uh, information that they can resonate with. Share with care. So if, for instance, you have um, a JV partner who wants to promote their book, make sure it's you're sharing your email list only with those people who are going to be uh, appreciative of your audience and give them value. So again, your audience is your greatest asset, protect it. Answer these questions for yourself. How can you generate loyalty in your audience in a way that appreciates, respects, protects, and inspires buy-in and sharing from your audience? Now here, let's get into some tips to remember. These are inspiration for online leaders. And remember, you got this. Number one, self-care. Self-care isn't selfish. Take care of you first, then your audience. Protect your privacy. Uh, be careful, especially if you're a woman online, about giving out uh, personal information like where you live and um, you know your marital status and talking about children. You want be very careful about those privacy issues online while still at the same time sharing your life with people but in a way that doesn't give those security issue details like you know you don't want to give out your personal phone number or your personal address online things of that nature so protect your privacy but still share your life so there's a fine line there Stay healthy in your body, mind, and spirit. It's important to set a good example for your followers by taking care of your health. 
control the trolls with boundaries. So there are ways of controlling trolls, whether you have a YouTube channel, a podcast, a blog, whatever it is that you're doing, ban the trolls and have your boundaries you know, right out there. So if you have a Facebook group, I'm sure you've been in Facebook groups where they put the rules right up front. Look, here's the rules. No selling, no spamming, blah, blah, blah. Control the trolls by stating your boundaries right up front. Copyright and gate your content. Uh, make sure people are aware that this is my original content. Please do not copy it. You are welcome to download it and use it. If you would like to share it with friends and family, please send them to my website and they can get it for free as well. So copyright, gate your content and set those boundaries. Stay positive. Which person would you rather watch on a video? The woman who is smiling and happy and excited or the man who is seems to be blaming God for everything going wrong in his life right now. <laughs> Personally, I like the lady who is smiling and excited and happy to see me, right? So if she came on my screen and she said, hi, I'm so happy to see you. And how are you doing today? And it's a beautiful day. I think that would be uh, much more attractive to me than to open up the screen and have this guy say, oh, everything's going wrong and the world is falling apart and blah, blah, blah. I don't want, I don't need that. <laughs> Enough of that on, on the news, right? So leave your negativity offline and stay positive. Positive people attract more people. You know, you attract more bees with honey than vinegar, as they say. So smile, support the people in your chat room. If you're on a video, live video or support the people who show up uh, on your blog or your podcast, support your, uh, in the people you're interviewing or support, support, support. People love to hear that positivity. Share within a positive framework. So say something kind of bad happened to you and you want to share it with your audience because it, it it's a topic that is of interest to them. Can you share it within a positive framework? Can you say, well, this really bad thing happened to me, but then this other thing happened and that was really good. And if the bad thing hadn't happened, then the good thing couldn't have happened. So share within that positive framework and that way you bring people back up again. So don't take them down into the depths and the pit and leave them there. Bring them back out again with you. Manage your emotions before you go live. So if you're having a disagreement with your sister or your mother or somebody in your life and it's really bringing you down and, oh, it's time to do a show. I can't, I don't have time for that. But then you get on and then you just moan and groan about what's going on in your life. People are going to be turned off. So manage your emotions before you go live. What we see in others is a reflection of ourselves. Take a look at this quote. More often than not, the things we detest and judge in others are a reflection of the things we cannot accept about ourselves. What does this mean? So when you see passive aggressive whining and trolls in your comments, please understand it's not about you. Those comments are not about you. It's about the person who wrote them. So what we need to do to protect ourselves, set up boundaries and stick to them install moderators on your live YouTube channel, uh, delete and ban trolls. No, 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 I don't accept trolls. No, nope, I don't accept passive aggressive. No, nope, I don't accept it. I understand it, but I don't accept those people to come into my world and to bring me down. And just remember other people's judgments are not about me. So the same goes for you. Other people's judgments are none of your business. They're not about you anyway. It's about them. Comment on this. Engagement matters whether it's negative or positive, right? On YouTube, on Amazon reviews, it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Engagement is what matters. Getting people to take action shows leadership. Whether that action is a positive comment or a negative comment or a neutral comment, hey, they commented uh, or they emailed you or they, you know, to 
did some sort of action. Provoking a response means you've made impact. You've made a difference. You woke them up. And remember that transformation requires action. So you're on your way to providing impact and transformation if people are taking action, no matter what that action is. Great idea. Imitation indicates success. Let me tell you that uh, when my partner and I started a YouTube channel about the Forest Fen treasure hunt, we immediately had, well, I won't say immediately, it was probably a good nine months later, but eventually there were tons of YouTube video, uh, you know, YouTube channels that sprung up about the same topic because people want to imitate what they love, but they want to do it their way. And that's fine because when something works well, the process will be copied. So just expect it. And remember, the more you spawn, the more channels you spawn or the more blogs you spawn, the more businesses that are just like yours, the more books you, you know, that are written just like yours, the higher up the ladder you go because your authority goes up every time somebody copies you. That just means that they saw something that was awesome and they wanted to do it too. And that's okay because every story is unique. Every YouTube channel out there is unique because it's produced by a different person with their own opinions and their own way of doing things. And it's all good. What is your definition of success? Evaluate your success by your level of impact. Maybe not by how much money you're bringing in or by how many subscribers you have or followers you have or how many comments you have on each video. The numbers aren't maybe as important, especially in the beginning, because remember, there's riches in the niches, but those niches can be very small and small channels with great products can still lead to great profits. Engaged, loyal viewers are more valuable and spend more money and more time with you than casual bystanders, and they will stay with you a lot longer. So, engaged, loyal viewers indicate success. Growth requires investment. Are you willing to invest the time, effort, and money to achieve slow growth. Let me tell you a short story. There's a young woman that was doing a YouTube video and she was telling her story about how when she decided to start a YouTube channel of gaming and she went live on her channel for four months and nobody showed up for four months. Then all of a sudden somebody with a whole lot of followers found her told all of his followers to go check out her channel and she had a whole bunch of viewers all of a sudden but she had to plug away at it in isolation for four months before she got there but she did it she was willing to invest the time and effort to have that growth so what does it take it takes frequent posting consistent posting persistent posting and expanding the viewer experience in whatever ways you can think that will work best for you. What we do is we do giveaways and we have ancillary products and events. So we have a book that talks about a treasure hunt. We have these coins. We have a website, we have a YouTube channel, we have photographs, we have a Facebook group, we have a Facebook page. It grows and it grows and it grows, right? And when the pandemic is over, we will have live events. And all of this just really gives everybody a chance to have more and more fun with it. Think for a moment of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter books. First, you had one book. And people were so excited about it. Then there was a whole series of books. And then there were movies. And then there's a, you know, uh, merchandise. And there's candies. And there's out, you know, clothes, the, the robes and the things. And things you can buy. Things you can touch. Things that make it real. And then there's a whole theme park about Harry Potter. So 
what can you do with your one product that becomes an entire experience for your audience that brings them in and gets them excited and gives them something tangible to hold on to? Here's where you can find me. At gypsieskiss.com, gypsieskiss.tv. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Just look for Shelly Carney. You can Google me. Join the Softer Side member vault at esofterside.com. I have all types of free content on there. I am an Amazon author. I have my own Amazon author page, and I have my own author page on Goodreads as well. So let me ask you, what challenge, problem, or situation is keeping you from becoming an online leader? I want you to think about that, and I want you to go ahead and download the materials and resources and work on them on your own and just really investigate what's going on for you when it comes to being an online leader. And I thank you so much for being here today and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye.